If you're relatively new to D2, or maybe just a big procrastinator, ain't nothing wrong with that, you may have not bought any exotics at the exotic kiosk at the tower yet. I did a video like this a long time ago, but times do change and metas come and go like the tides. Today, we're gonna do a quick review of what newer players should be picking up at the kiosk at the tower. Big heads up though, this is not, I repeat, not a video covering what the absolute top tier best options are at the kiosk. What I mean by that is there are a few PVE weapons in particular I'm gonna save for the honorable mentions category at the end of the video that are exceptionally good at very high levels of play. However, one could argue that they have a little bit of a skill curve and therefore are not exactly new player friendly. I don't wanna leave them out in the cold though, on the off chance that some new players out there wanna throw caution to the wind and learn some higher tier damage strategies. And of course, to also avoid comments like, Lamau, he didn't recommend Izzy, what a f an idiot. So I'm gonna do 10 recommendations total today, about five for PVE and five for PVP, followed by honorable mentions at the end. Why don't we kick things off with PVE? But real quick, I gotta tell you about Geology. I've partnered with them to bring you today's sponsored video, so let's thank them. Geology is a 26-time award-winning skin, hair, and body care company. They're basically the salt agrepo of skin and healthcare. Geology creates simple and effective skincare and healthcare routines customized just for you with ingredients that are proven to work. Look, I get it. We all get busy out there grinding or gaming or whatever you're doing, but you should take time to take care of your skin and hair. As mentioned, Geology is top tier in the skincare game. They've gotten nods from Men's Health and Oprah Daily Grooming Awards, not to mention that their products have gotten literally thousands of five-star reviews. Right now, for a limited time, they've got a crazy good offer on the table. Use my code FALLOUT100 and Geology will give you 100% off. Yeah, you heard me right. That's a free trial. You only pay for shipping on the offer. That's a value of $49 that you're getting for free. All you have to do is pay $4.95 for shipping in the US. Don't miss out on that deal. And again, use code FALLOUT100. Thank you, Geology. All right, back to the content. And at number five, I'm recommending the Sleeper Simulant, which last I checked is a free exotic as it was part of the Red War campaign. Sleeper Simulant is an excellent way for newer players to get hands-on experience with a weapon that does big chunk damage to a large beefy target, like a mini boss, a champion, or a boss. It's simple, hold down the trigger, charge the linear fusion rifle up, and release big red laser beam of death that hits very hard. So easy, a Titan main could do it. Now, Sleeper certainly ain't the number one top dog damage dealer in the game, but it definitely can hang. Not too long ago, I put out a video on how to farm Ear Ute in the recent Crota raid. Sleeper Simulant can hang and get a one phase no problem. Might need to pair it with a divinity, but you know what I mean. It's important to note though, that if you really wanna maximize the output of Sleeper, you gotta get the exotic catalyst, which thankfully is way easier to get now than it used to be. All you have to do is run Nightfall Strikes and you may get the catalyst at the very end if your RNG is good. The catalyst gives you more ammo and also speeds up the charge time by a noticeable amount, which believe me, you want. Overall, the gun is a great damage the big bad starting point for newer players in D2 and worth checking out. And again, you can get the gun if you're a free to play player. Next at number four, the other weapon option I'm recommending for the free to play crowd on the PVE side, Legend of Acreus. Whereas Sleeper is your hard hitting boss option from mid to long range, Legend of Acreus is a power weapon shotgun and your close range hard hitting option. Acreus might not be as universally helpful as something as Sleeper but in situations where Acreus is called for, it does shine really brightly. Basically, if you can get within five to 10 feet of a big chonky enemy with Acreus without getting destroyed, you can wail on it really hard. Even though the current go-to option for dealing damage to new raid boss Crota is to sword him to death, Legend of Acreus can get the job done too if you're a newer player. And if your LFG group isn't full of elitist douchebags who yell at you for not having a god tier sword. Like Sleeper though, be warned that if you want to unlock the full potential of Acreus, Acreus, you will need to get the exotic catalyst, which can be earned the same way. Just go do nightfall strikes until your RNG is good and it finally drops at the end of a strike. The Acreus catalyst gives you extra ammo reserves and the perk trench barrel for free, aka spank an enemy with a melee attack and now you have a short window where your next three shots are going to deal an extra 50% damage each, which is huge. Go get it and try it out. Again, does not require any extra DLC to acquire and you can see if it's something that fits your PVE playstyle. Moving on, PVE weapon recommendations three through number one are all unfortunately paid, meaning you gotta drop cold hard cash to get them. And that's up to you as a new player to decide if you wanna do that or not. So with that in mind, we come to number three, Ager's Scepter. 
or is it Azure? Azure Scepter? Azure Scepter? Never quite really learned how to pronounce that word. I'm going with Azer. Azer is a trace rifle that meshes really well with the overall stasis kit. With Azer's final blows generate a slowing burst around the dead target and slowing enemies in PVE is basically always really beneficial. The exotic catalyst, of course, takes the gun to another level. When your super meter is full, activate the catalyst and now your beam gets bonus damage and the ability to both directly slow and freeze targets by shooting them. Unfortunately, that can only help you when your super energy is full, but getting super energy is damn easy to do in PvE. It's why a lot of PvE players often run with low intellect in general, because your meter gets boosted fairly quickly by you just carving through waves and waves of enemies like normal. Again, meshes beautifully with the stasis kit. You got things like uh, Whisper of Fissures, Whisper of Refraction, Whisper of Durance, etc. And the inherent ability to slow and freeze enemies means you can use it against overload and unstoppable champions as well. Ager is a hard recommend, especially if you're interested in playing stasis in PvE. Moving on, coming in at number two is Quicksilver Storm. If you're looking for a general all-purpose primary weapon for PvE, this is your go-to right here. I gotta be honest, I wasn't expecting much from this gun when it entered the sandbox, but it's become my lazy go-to pick for a wide variety of activities for how good it is. Exotic primaries deal respectable damage, and being a strand weapon with the catalyst activated, Quicksilver has a lot of synergy with strand builds, which go hard in PvE. Especially if there's a lot of strand options in the artifact, like there are in Season of the Witch, Quicksilver will shine extra bright. The real fun factor, though, is the exotic perk Grenade Chaser, which allows you to quickly convert Quicksilver into a grenade launcher on the fly by holding down the reload button. The grenades are not weak at all, and due to kind of a weird glitch or a feature, unsure, but you can fire them very quickly back to back to back. Check it out. If I fire them all normally, they go about this fast. However, if I quickly hit the reload button immediately after firing each shot, you can fire all the grenades this fast. Again, not really sure if that is a bug or a feature or what, but the bottom line is that Quicksilver is basically a primary weapon that moonlights as a special weapon. The grenades are good damage and you build them up by using the weapon normally, which is great. Nothing tricky or fancy like Izanaki's Burden, rocket swapping, just straightforward and good. I'm really not joking when I say that I use this weapon all the time in PvE. It's a jack of all trades gun and definitely worth your time. And at number one on the PvE front, I recommend Wither Horde. I love Wither Horde. It's been in the game for a while now, and ever since unlocking the exotic catalyst, I've been drinking the Kool-Aid hard. Wither Horde is a unique grenade launcher that deals area of effect damage on the floor via a glowy green puddle. Enemies that stand in that puddle take repeated damage over time, likewise if you just straight shot an enemy with the grenade round. You can actually have both effects going at the same time if you have a enemy standing in the goo pile who you have shot with the grenade round. Wither Horde's exotic catalyst is what makes the gun extra viable, effectively giving you free auto-loading holster. TLDR, you fire Wither Horde and then swap to another gun to shoot the target a little bit more while your exotic auto reloads itself and you still get that free chip damage. I think I've brought Wither Horde to every day one raid that I wound up completing in the first 24 hours, and it's one of my staple go-to weapons for endgame PvE content. Hard recommend that you pick it up if you're new to D2 and really want to get into PvE. All right, with the PvE recommendations on the table, why don't we swap over to the PvP recommendations? And admittedly, this one might be a little bit harder, but I'm going to make it work. Coming in at number five is a free-to-play option, Sturm. I have been on a huge 120 RPM hand cannon kick lately in PvP. My number one hand cannon in the game has, over time, become a 120 RPM. Those who watch my stream already know, it is Igneous Hammer. <sighs> Smooth. But if you're new and haven't stepped into Trials yet or just haven't earned a God Roll Igneous yet, this is a great way to get some experience playing with a rock solid 120 RPM that is good to go right out of the box. Sturm has excellent base stats that a lot of people sleep on and they get even better if you unlock the exotic catalyst. All in all, you're looking at 90 range, 51 stability, and 70 handling. Granted, it doesn't have as much aim assist as my beloved Igham, but still. And to all you new folk out there, keep in mind, just because Sturm was quote, made to be paired with Drang doesn't mean that you have to. Pair it with a shotgun, a fusion rifle, who cares? I promise you, it's way better than you think, and especially if you want to go play Checkmate, which is actually a fun game type IMO, 
it's a very reliable weapon to bring in there as the mode is essentially dominated by 120 RPM hand cannons. Sturm also happens to pair beautifully with another free to play weapon, which works very well right out of the packaging, which we'll cover right now. Coming in at number four, we have Fellwinter's Lie, which again should also be a free to play weapon. I know technically not an exotic, heads up, neither is number three, but still available at the Monument to Lost Lights kiosk at the tower, just under the legacy gear section. And even though it's not an exotic, it performs better than a lot of exotics you could bring into PvP. And if you want to get nitpicky, just like an exotic, Fellwinter has a curated role. If you're new, that just means it's a fixed role and will always be the same. Fellwinter has three perks that are great in PvP for shoddying. Slide shot, surplus, and opening shot. I'm going to go ahead and recommend surplus for the handling buff, but if you're comfortable with the weapon handling already, or if you main Ophidian Aspect or something like that, sure, go slide shot. The shot package weapon trait used to be a pretty big deal, but over the years we've gotten a bit more reform and consistency to how shotgun pellet spread works in general, so it's less of a big deal now. But anyway, the bottom line is that for a right out of the package special weapon, Felwinter puts in good work. If I had to go and try and do well in comp or go flawless in trials on any given weekend, only being able to use free weapons available at the kiosk, Sturm and Fellwinter's Lie would probably be my first weapon pairing attempt. But yeah, if you're new and need a quality aggro special weapon, Fellwinter is right here, and you can get pretty damn far in PvP with just that shoddy alone. Next at number three, which should also be available for free-to-play players, Adored. Again, like Fellwinter, not an exotic, but still available at the exotic kiosk at the tower in the legacy gear section. Where Fellwinter should be the new player go-to for those who like to go close quarters aggro, Adored is the play for those who enjoy sniping. While a PvP vet could argue that Adored is far from the best sniper in the game, I still know people who use it on the regular. It has good perks and at the end of the day can get the job done in the right hands. It's got a solid 45 zoom scope, which a lot of people prefer, complete with respectable base stats and access to Snapshot, a perk which has remained awesome on snipers in PvP since year one. If I had to reach into the game's source code like Neo or something like that, I would probably pick something other than Killing Wind in Column 3 if I could give Adored something better. I usually prefer that perk on primary weapons, but that being said, Killing Wind is a fine sniper perk and you could honestly do a lot worse. Moving forward, recommended PvP weapon options in number two and number one are all going to be paid content, aka not free. You will have to decide for yourself if you're a new player, if you want to buy them or not, but they are all from the same paid content bucket, if that makes anything better, the Forsaken content bucket. PvP weapon recommendation number two, and holy f please have mercy on my soul for recommending this if you are a veteran player, the Monarch. As long as you're either an atheist or at the very least comfortable with the fact that you may go directly to the Lake of Fire for all eternity in the hereafter, Le Monarch is a great pick for PvP. It got a little bit of a tweak lately, and as many people, myself included, feared, it wasn't really a nerf as we thought it might have been. More of just a lateral move over to being a lightweight frame, which was improved overall. The poison damage is shorter, but at the end of the day, Monarch is still a dangerously effective and annoying weapon in PvP. All you really have to do is just hit an enemy with one arrow and you've effectively removed them from the fight for the next few seconds, unless they want to risk popping their head out and getting buried immediately. Le Monarch is essentially the world's easiest team shot weapon in my opinion, and as much as I hate it, if new players want PvP recommendations, it's a very obvious recommend in my book. Won't make you a ton of friends though, but some people are okay with that. Finally, at number one, sort of a double answer depending on your taste in primary weapons, Thorn and Ace of Spades. Yes, the PvP vet recommended three hand cannons in one video, shocker. Look, if there were better PvP weapons in the kiosk, I wouldn't have to do this, but I'm sure as not recommending Jotun. Let's go ahead and start with Thorn. I've been a big Thorn lover for a while now, but admittedly, it is outclassed by a lot of legendary options. That being said, it's great for what it is. A reliable, fun 140 RPM hand cannon with interesting utility, able to apply burn damage and delay shield regen for at least a little bit, which can come in clutch. After getting a kill, Thorn's little soul devour spiel is great gives you much more punching power and allows you to potentially pick up a two tap. If that all sounds good to you, good news. Thorn is finally, after years of people like me writing letters, 
getting an exotic catalyst in the near future. Some people were let down when Bungie unveiled the details of this exotic catalyst, but I was goddamn stoked. Thorn's catalyst will grant a buff to both range and stability by default, and on top of that, picking up a remnant on a kill will further boost range, handling, and mobility as well. TLDR, Thorn's Catalyst won't make the gun perform any differently, just better overall, which is what it needed, IMO. Still, I know some people don't like Thorn, they're wrong, but I very much enjoy it and I think it'll be an even better weapon pick for PvP when we get the Catalyst. The safer option, though, is probably Ace of Spades. Not really a shocker that I'm recommending it, I'm sure, to any vets who are watching today's video. Ace has been top shelf ever since it entered the meta back in Forsaken, with very few changes overall. Yeah, I did mention I'm on a 120 RPM hand cannon kick, but Ace is unquestionably good and elite in the 140 RPM tier. Great base stats, great range range and an awesome ability in the form of Memento Mori, extra damage bullets and radar when ADSing the gun. Mori bullets now do go away when you swap your weapon, which is unfortunate and a big blow to Ace, but still, the gun is good and should absolutely be respected in PvP to this day. Alright, honorable PvE mentions for newer players who don't really care about learning curve and want to get to the meta hard and fast. The Lumina Hand Cannon and the Izanagi's Burden Sniper Rifle. Lumina can let you shoot noble rounds, which heal you and a teammate and also provide a friendly damage buff. 35% buffed weapon damage, which is actually stronger than a Warlock Radiant Well, if you can believe that. You can actually use it with a Warlock Radiant Well. The damage buffs don't stack, but the game just takes the higher buff number. So in theory, you would get the damage buff from the Lumina and the heal factor from the Warlock Well. Izanagi's Burden, on the other hand, is a hard-hitting sniper that can be used in a popular DPS strategy where you swap back and forth between Izzy and an auto-loading rocket launcher. Basically, you fire your rocket, you swap to your powered-up is a Nagi shot, you fire that, manually reload another powered up Izzy shot, then swap back to your auto load rocket, which should be reloaded by now, rinse and repeat. Not exactly a new player friendly strategy, but absolutely viable if you want to skip the entry level stuff and just go to the top shelf. If you have your own recommendations for newer players in terms of what to pick up at the kiosk at the tower, first share your thoughts down in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on stream.